I'd like to take just a few minutes to explain how to complete this very important part of your course. The evaluation of diet project uh, accounts for 15% of your final grade and you need to begin working on it shortly after the class begins. This is a group project so you will need to work together in groups of at least two to four members. Maximum will be four participants, minimum of two. There are several purposes uh, for the completion of this project. We would like for you to um, be able to use an online diet analysis software tool to evaluate the macro and micronutrient content of a particular diet. The reason that this activity is not due until Chapter 7 is at that point we sh shall have covered most uh, of all of the macro and micronutrients including carbohydrates, fat, and protein and a lot of the vitamins and minerals. So this should put you in a good position to comment on the uh, outcomes of a diet analysis. We also would like uh, for the student to be able to make application of risks and benefits of eating a certain pattern, whether it be a popular diet or therapeutic diet or perhaps even a um, ethnic or religious diet. Just depends on the ones that you see that are available for you to sign up for in your class. Again, at this point in the course, you should be able to make those types of applications. Uh, suggestions to improve it, if applicable. And in general, discuss the diet's palatability, uh, the associated expense, the time required to uh, follow that type of diet, the commitment level, uh, ease of attaining the foods, and so forth. Hopefully, this project will help foster collaboration and, and cooperation in a group activity. We also hope that you will build some research skills. If you've not visited the online library at Troy, you'll get an opportunity to do that and search a database. And improve your technology skills. Uh, we'll have you display your student work in some manner, uh, depending on which semester that we're in. So here's what you'll do. Go to Module 7 in the course. This should be done at the beginning of the semester scroll through the different diets groups that are available and sign up for a diet of interest. If you have a particular diet that you'd like to uh, present as a group send me an email and we'll discuss that. Each student uh, will be required to conduct a lit search and um, these are some of the databases that you can use PubMed, CINAHL, Ovid, etc and uh, find a research article on the diet. Now one person in your group may report on a website that's related to the diet provided that it is a legitimate website, it's not a commercial website. And you can again uh, send an email to the instructor uh, with regard to the acceptability of a website. So we want to give everybody a chance to do some research here. Now you cannot post the same article. Each student must find a different article. So again, it's important to work together. Each student will develop a full day's menu based on the diet and analyze that day's menu by using an online software program, My Nutrition Analysis Software. The group will then form a consensus statement on the quality of the diet again palatability, expense, time involved, its restrictiveness, etc. and specific suggestions to improve it. So I wanted to provide an example of a project that was submitted last semester. Sometimes if you know what the end product looks like it makes it a little easier to do. So we had a group last semester that uh, did the research project on the caveman diet and uh, there were four people in the group and yours doesn't exactly have to look like this. You can be creative here, but the essential elements that are required on the rubric are here. So we have a slide that introduces the diet in general, uh, some, some things to help, uh, help the person understand what foods are allowed and what foods are not allowed. And then each student um, would indicate that this was their slide and the article that they found, a statement, um, and this is how the student chose to summarize their article. 
and this is a day's menu based on the Paleolithic diet as you can see here and then the analysis a little difficult to read but um, you could use two different slides would make it a little easier to read so one for the day's menu and one for the analysis it's not necessarily to post individual foods as she did I'm just really looking for these two tables from the MyNet software and here's another student's work she did the website and uh, this is how she lined up her day's menu with the food and then the analysis in using the MyNet software. A little easier to read. Uh, again, following the rules and regulations of the diet. And so we go through and just sort of show you how each student did this and what they came up with. So each student will get a grade for their individual contribution and their individual work. And again, you can uh, exercise a little creativity here as far as how you present your information. Uh, this person note um, calories were low, so that individual uh, probably did not receive full credit. You have to look at and sort of uh, eyeball your results, make sure that the diet is reasonable for an adult. If it's a diet that adults would follow, we may have some diets in some semesters to follow that are specifically designed for children or perhaps a popular weight loss diet that might be a little lower in calories but the uh, paleo diet that does not apply and so um, there's the analysis there and using the information found at the lit search and the diet analyses we develop a consensus statement as this uh, group did and then you post your results so here's some helpful tips to help you earn that full uh, grade compliment for this activity demonstrate that you're working well together as a group under the chapter 7 module there are there's a group space where you all can post your individual work um, and uh, make sure that you don't repeat each other with uh, the lit search and make sure that everybody's on the same page and we produce a product that is um, something you'll be proud of. In order to receive an individual grade for this assignment, every student must upload the completed project into the electronic gradebook. Now I'll be able to look in the group space and determine your individual contributions but as far as uploading the work for a grade, please upload the final project into the group workspace area and it will appear as an uploaded document that needs my attention in the grade book. Note the due date on the course calendar and pace your work accordingly. Obviously we would not expect you to have uh, done the diet analysis and develop a consensus statement at the beginning of the semester but certainly by the time we're strolling into chapter 7 you should be able to make some um, informed comments about the strengths and limitations of the diet and now I want to talk to you a little bit about the software that we're going to use again we're not using the software that comes with your book because it goes into a lot of detail uh, that's beyond the scope of what you really need to do we will be using the uh, MyNats website which is found at the website that you see here myfoodrecord.com and you'll select version 2.0 and you'll go to the enter foods option I want you to pay attention to the default serving size it's usually quite small uh, far less than most people eat so you'll may need to make adjustments uh, this is the single reason that many people lose points on their assignment is they fail to pay attention to the portion size and number of servings that they consume or that would be for a general adult um, they also make errors in selecting the portion size for example you might have an eight ounce cereal bowl but if you enter eight ounces of cereal 
you've basically entered over half of a box of cereal. So there is a difference in weight and volume. The food database at MyNats is quite broad. It will take some patience and time to find the correct food item. If you can't find the exact item, then you might have to find an appropriate substitute or enter individual items that comprise the recipe of the food that you have selected. And again, uh, you want to make sure that you have a complete record including all the beverages and snacks that would be included for a full 24 hour period. Once you have built your list of foods, you will cut and paste that food list to a Word document. Some of the students did it to a paint file first and then made it look really nice and then brought it over to PowerPoint. Again, you can be creative. Uh, then you're going to analyze that food list. Make sure you click the display all nutrients radio button so that you get a complete list and you won't lose the points. Uh, it will give you the information on over 20 different nutrients. And if you see something that looks unusual, for example, your calories are low or really high, you'll need to go back and see that you've entered the foods correctly. So what I want to do now, two things to help you. We want to um, go to the online library, just in case you've not done this before, or it's been a while that uh, since you've done a library search, you would click on Current Students and slip down here to the library and click the online databases and I like PubMed it's one of my favorites it's updated daily now there's a PubMed Central and a PubMed PubMed Central uh, all the articles are available there but it is limited it won't have every article and some of those might be available to you through the Troy Library so we're going to go to the one that's uh, link to the Troy Library and you could enter your search terms here. Let's do um, Paleolithic diet and you can see a number of options come up. Let's do Paleolithic diet review. Again uh, selecting different ones can help make sure that you don't find the same article. You might want to approach it from a different perspective and we might come down here and see which one interests us. Let's click on Paleolithic diets as a model to prevent Western diseases like heart disease and cancer. And so there's a discussion here. We see if we want this particular article and download the PDF version. And again, if it's not available to the Troy Library, you might try it in PubMed Central. But here's our feature article, and it's uh, recent, 2012. It looks like it'd be a really good article to review prior to, uh, to conducting your menu analysis. Let you know what foods are allowed and not allowed, and uh, you'll be able to comment on the research about that particular diet. The next thing I want to do is take you to the MyNats website and show you how to navigate that. We'll be using the 2.0 version. It's the more complete version. And you're going to uh, presume that you are following this diet. So I'm presuming most of you are between 19 and 30. We'll pick male. And we'll add a food that would be on the Paleolithic diet. Now, I happen to know that they are not allowed to have any type of processed food, so we certainly wouldn't pick bread but they would be allowed to have um, beef. So let's see what sort of foods pop up. Lots of different options here for beef. Wow. They're not allowed to have any processed foods, so let's just pick um, ground beef. Add the selected food. Notice the default is one ounce. Most people certainly eat more than that. So we'll say a four ounce portion and that this person had one four ounce portion. So that's the first thing added. We might select um, 
Oops. Go back here and put in green beans. And again, it gives you snap beans, cooked, boiled, drained, with or without salt. So we'll add that food. And again, collect, uh, indicate the correct serving size. Most people would do half a cup. So again, we would continue to enter foods based on the Paleolithic diet. I know they are allowed to have nuts, so let's see what sort of nuts we have. Wow, raw acorns. I don't think anybody really eats those, but uh, let's go down through here and maybe some peanuts. Again, the default serving size. Let's go with a um, cup and put in half a cup so they've entered half a cup of peanuts I keep making that error don't I um, if we want to add another food that would be particular to the paleolithic diet we might do some fruit Again, paleo is not allowed to have milk or processed grains. Here's raw strawberries. And I really like strawberries, so let's go with two cups. So you get the idea. We won't uh, enter a full day's worth as you will when you complete your project. I do want to go ahead and show you the analysis piece but when you finish this you would highlight and copy and paste this into your presentation for analyzed foods you would be sure and select the display all nutrients even though it's not going to be a complete analysis we're happy with 95 percent and again this would not be an acceptable product to turn in because as you, as you can see we don't have enough food we've only got 30 percent of the calories needed by the time you get to the point that you'll do this project in the course, you will know that 875 calories is certainly not adequate for an adult for the day. And that's why you see everything is low. Um, so anyway, when you, when you do this, you'll highlight, copy, and paste this into your presentation as well. And use this to make your comments. So that's uh, how you can do this project. And hopefully... Uh, be very successful with it.